BS9999 is a standard that tells you or gives you more or less everything you need to know about how to design fire safety into your building when, you use, when you're designing buildings. And in the UK, we really have three approaches that we can take when we're doing that. You can either follow the government guidance, the approved documents in England and Wales, the technical standards in, uh, in Scotland and the various other government produced documents. Um, and that's fine, they're reasonably straightforward, they're reasonably flexible. You can go to BS7974 and design it from first principles in some respects and that's a very powerful tool and is very often used um, in, uh, in a lot of the work that we do on infrastructure. But there's the middle ground and that's BS9999 which is kind of a performance based code but it's actually quite a lot more prescriptive than 7974 but it allows you more flexibility than the government guidance and it's introduced the, 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 the concept of risk profiling. So depending upon whether your occupants are familiar with the building or not, whether they're awake or asleep, um, you can, and the fire growth rate that you're going to get in your building, you get a certain flexibility with your design, which is actually a really powerful tool. And it's a sort of middle ground between true fire engineering and the government and the government codes and it's intended for use by architects um, and fire engineers um, and we use it for all sorts of all sorts of buildings everything from uh, schools universities hotels um, uh, offices shops etc it covers the lot it even tells you how to design theatres if that if that's what you're into it was first issued in um, 2008 and it replaced a whole suite of standards in the BS um, 5588 series. And just late, I was one of the original authors of the 2008 version. And just recently, we've been working on the 2016 update. It's been eight years since the first one came out. We've learned a lot of lessons. We've learned how to use the standard. So we're refreshing and reworking it um, to make it even better than it is already. So what have we come up with? The main changes. The general principles section is all, has been altered to bolster advice on cherry picking. What do I mean by that? I mean certain designers who look at all the codes and standards that they can get their hands on and pick the bits that are most palatable from each one, put, put them all together in a vast mishmash and then give that to building control and say, there, I've designed something that is fire safe. It doesn't work like that. BS9999 is a comprehensive standard and certain bits of it rely upon other bits of it to make those bits safe. So if you just pick the palatable bits of BS9999 and mix them up with the palatable bits of the approved document B, you might not come up with a design which is acceptably fire safe. We've also included advice on how to apply the standard to a typical design process. Because what we've found in the past, and what a lot of people have found in the past, is that the fire engineering bit of the design tends to get done too late. You'll get the, the design of the building, the civils, the structural, the architectural design, and people think the fire engineering bit is, are the stuff that wails and squirts. The fire alarm and detection, the sprinklers, etc. It's not as simple as that. Your fire engineering strategy for your building can control the whole shape of the building. And time after time, we've got involved too late. And the standard aims to provide guidance that addresses this and actually tells you, if you're following the REBA design plan, what fire engineering you should be doing at the relevant stage in the, in the project. And it actually introduces a flow chart that, um, that, that tries to codify that. We've taken out the text that's covered by BS991, and that's fire safety in the design, management, and use of residential buildings. It used to be included in 9999 and 5588 part one. It's now in a separate standard, BS991, that tells you how to design flats and that sort of thing. We have kept in quite a lot of the guidance on residential because it applies to mixed use buildings which is very, very popular in towns and cities where you, you might have retail on the ground floor office and then you have residential above. So it still applies to that, but standalone residential buildings are now not within the scope of 9999.
there was a management section in there and there still is. We talked about taking it out, we decided not to, which led to a few people throwing the toys out of the pram, but we were very firm about keeping it in. Um, and there's significant alteration and simpli simplification of the guidance on management and it now refers to PASS 7, which is the, uh, public, uh, which is the BSI document that um, tells you what a good fire safety management system looks like. The next change, we've incorporated the EN performance criteria for passive fire protection, that's what PFP means. Um, and we've altered the approach for saying tested to certain standards to classified against the EN product standards. And this again is really, really crucial and, and, I, and I think as an industry we've, we've yet to get our heads around these European standard classifications. Um, what happens to those post-Brexit? Don't know. Um, I personally think it would be very, very sensible for us to keep engaged in that process. Um, it might not be mandatory um, if we don't um, adopt CE marking anymore, but it would certainly be very sensible to keep within that regime. Um, improved guidance on fire resisting and smoke resisting ducts and dampers. Um, my mechanical engineering colleagues typically get really, really confused about this um, and how to specify fire resisting ducts and dampers and where to put them and whether they need a fire resisting damper or a smoke resisting damper or a fire and smoke resisting damper um, in order to maintain the compartment lines um, we've clarified that to try and address that. Um, I don't know if anybody's involved in any buildings that include atriums but we've simplified and refined the annex on atriums and that was really really com complicated and by atriums I mean buildings with a blooming great hole in the middle effectively, which is very, very popular. Um, we had a lot of uh, examples of how you do and don't do that in the standard. Um, it was very complicated. We've simplified that. We've, rec we've recognised water mist as an, as an alternative to sprinklers. In 9999, if you put sprinklers in a building, you get certain design freedoms because it alters the risk pro profile of the building. Um, and there's always been the question, do other forms of extinguishing or suppression technology give you an equal benefit? And we kind in the 2008 version, we kind of said, yeah, maybe, but you'll need to prove it. Now that we've got British standards that tell you what a good water mist system looks like for both domestic and industrial, non-domestic premises, we've included that. And we said in certain respects, you can put in a water mist system and it gives you the same benefit as sprinklers. In summary, BS9999, we, we've tested that significantly over the last eight years and it's been tested in service. It's been used many, many times. In Atkins, we probably use 9999 for about half the buildings that we design. Some issues have been identified. We had nearly 500 comments on the 2008 version. We had 623 on our draft and we've been through and we've addressed every one of those in committee. The 2016 version seeks to address those issues. It is evolution, not revolution. We haven't thrown the baby out with the bathwater. It's all going to look very familiar. The, the, uh, the, um, uh, the arrangement, the configuration of the standard is the same, but where it needed improving, we've improved it. In the UK, developing from DD240, BS 7974 was first published in 2001. Now, the code is supported by eight published documents, and it's these PDs that contain the detailed technical guidance on different aspects of fire engineering, from background information to quantitative risk assessment. The last part of which was uh, developed from scratch is PD 8. Um, that was published in 2012 and that gives the designer um, real insight into how to um, tease out property protection um, and resilience issues from their, uh, their clients and, and get, make sure that those objectives are embedded within the design. The last revision was PD5 and that was renewed in 2014. So that's why we're embarking on a renewal programme um, as we speak. 
um, to ensure that the standard and all of those supporting PDs remain relevant, current and useful.